So hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'm delighted to be speaking to Adila Zafar this evening. Um, Adila Zafar is a multidisciplinary artist and illustrator. He is based in Karachi and having obtained a BFA with a distinction from the National College of Art and Design, his initial trajectory led him towards illustration. And that has also played a highly influential role in his um, artistic practice ever since. And interestingly, and he's going to talk about this properly later as well, while working as a national illustration consultant for the Northern Areas Education Project in the remote areas of Northern Pakistan, Adil began, you know, utilizing materials on hand. And because uh, a lot of material was not available to him in those areas, and that led him to find substitutes for paints and other surfaces which eventually led to the development of his characteristically reductive technique by engraving on exposed photographic sheets. And his work has been exhibited nationally and internationally with venues and art fairs considering, uh, sorry, including Hinterden Gallery in Vienna, Lori Shabibi in Dubai, Art Stage in Singapore, Art Basel in Hong Kong, Pulse Art Fair in New York, <laughs> and there in the second Kathmandu Biennale, amongst other places, as well as local galleries such as Gandhara Art Gallery um, and um, Sanat Gallery in Karachi. Adil is represented by both Gandhara Art Gallery as well as Forest Gallery in Singapore and Icon Gallery in New York. He has participated in both national and international residencies, including the Studio RM residency in Lahore, Paramita Artist Studio, and, and um, the Center of Contemporary Art in Cordoba, Spain. Now, his bio is extensive. So, Adil, your bio is really exciting and interesting, and the exhibitions that you have participated in globally have been very, very interesting. But before we talk about all of that, and especially about your recent practice, I really wanted to talk a little bit about what I spoke about earlier, essentially your journey towards this very particular, specific, and some would say signature technique that you use, which is about mm -hmm. scratching or even engraving within photographic, it started off as photographic sheets and since has become vinyl, I believe. So I want to talk a little bit and ask you a few questions about how you took that route, particularly since from what sure. I understand, you, when you were at NCA, you, you know, took on a very regular degree with regular artistic materials. So tell me about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so uh, when I was there at NCA, so academically, like, as you know, that we used to... Uh, kind of work with different mediums and materials over there. And by that mm -hmm. time, when I was uh, graduating, we had one major and one minor. So I took painting as my major subject and my, my minor was printmaking over there. And mm -hmm. I used to, you know, conventionally paint. And mm -hmm. uh, the themes were, you know, kind of very literal by that time. And I was kind of exploring myself. I was kind of like my query about myself was to check my patience. So mm -hmm. I actually made up an assignment for myself. What, what I did, I started painting uh, the similar size uh, tiles, mm -hmm. like six by six inches. And what I did, I made the object constant the 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 mm -hmm. object the imagery which i was painting on that i made that mm. constant for myself i made the color pa palette constant for myself and i thought let's try that and let's say how many times i can repeat the same imagery along with the same color palette and where am i going going to be fed up with this so that was a challenge for me. And when I initiated that project for my thesis, I think I ended up making around 1,000 and like 1,500 or so smaller tiles out of it. Wow. And I, yeah, so like the date, the date has arrived over there for the thesis, but I was constantly working and I was 
enjoying the similar thing like making it again and again again and again so mm. that's how i discovered for myself that probably i have a certain patience and probably i can carry on my art practice my whole life like my ideology along with this thing so that's how i think i initiated initially when i like coming back from the artistic background from from the nca then when i graduated i came back to karachi i think that was a pretty much good decision by mm -hmm. that time because i saw most of my peers they were kind of thinking to stay back at lahore and like they were kind of struggling and they th they thought that this is a good idea to begin their journey from lahore but i deliberately decided to come back over here uh, uh, come back to your comfort zone essentially yeah, right yeah so yeah. because my family was uh, like i live like i have lived most of my time over here and i thought it's a good way to begin something if you come back to your hometown so um, when i came back then uh, obviously uh, the ho the horizon is you know kind of broaden up and i thought let's start working uh, with something and then i got some commission projects initially um, and there there was a publishing house the book group wonderful they, they offered me to come as an illustrator as a freelance illustrator and then i initially decided to you know make some illustrations for different publishing houses uh mm. publishing house in karachi including the oxford university press and so forth and i worked as an illustrator as a freelance illustrator and made supplementary reading material and how interesting uh, like produced uh, different story books and things like that by that time so that's quite a change from a what you were studying at nca the the, the re mm. repetitive very similar thesis project and definitely extremely different from what you are doing today yes it is it is like so um, i mean th that was a struggling time and if you remember like i'm talking about two decades uh, like i'm talking about in 90s like two decades pehle ki main baat kar raha hu so that mm -hmm. was a time when there were hardly any galleries in karachi now you can see there are so many art galleries yeah. and different venues where you can exhibit or you pitch your idea but by that time there were hardly two or three prominent galleries mm -hmm. and it mm -hmm. was very difficult for a newcomer or for an emerging artist to pitch the proposal or to you know show the work because that was i think nearly impossible to get a show initially mm -hmm. so 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 i thought like it's a good way to start my career and, as an illustrator and when mm -hmm. i was you know working as an illustrator then i got a chance to live in a comparatively remote area which is the northern okay. side of pakistan so i was based in gilgit and there was a project going on uh, in collaboration with the british council and the education sector of the northern areas where they were mm. kind of developing the textbooks and they they were looking for an illustrator so somehow i got in and then i lived in a solitude for i think around 5 or 6 years over there in in, really? in gilgit you were there for five yeah. wow i didn't realize yeah. that and how interesting because i know these days especially so many local tourists have been traveling up to the northern areas and then mm -hmm. of course the the northern areas themselves are changing so quickly so it must have been such a different time when you were there completely empty and remote it must have been stunning and it's still is yeah. stunning of course but yeah yeah you you're right in a way and i was adventurous that that's why i have taken the chance to live mm. up over there and i have seen most of the northern areas because you know i was traveling here and there so there are places where nobody goes and i have seen you know uh, all of them so wow. like 
that that's how i uh, uh, so coming back to your question so when i was there in solitude so i was kind of uh, thinking how to start and building my own own my own career as an art artist and how can i just start working for my own because this is something which is commercial and mm-hmm. uh, the problem was at the northern areas because it is a remote area so those uh, conventional mediums were ca- hard to come by like you cannot get the you are una- you i was unable to get the canvas or paint and things mm-hmm. like that so what i did i just started uh, scraping different surfaces like photographic papers with with cutters and blades mm-hmm. and i as as i said that i i have chosen my minor subject the as a print making so i had a certain knowledge so i mm-hmm. so when i when i started doing that i started making my own characters and they were very whimsical by that time and i started enjoying the particular technique and the linear quality of the line which comes in when you scrape or scratch something so i was fascinated with that but the problem was that uh, the, the there's was there was a limitation of size because i was of course scraping the paper which has a limited you know size and i was mm-hmm. thinking to explore something beyond to that and that's how the time passes and then i later on like i i come i came back to karachi but that thing was stuck something in my mind that i have to do something with it and then accidentally wow. um, i find i found this uh, plastic vinyl which we mm. normally use uh, for for flooring in our mm. uh, like lower middle class if you if you just to if you just go to the lower middle class houses you will find out there's a certain flooring there's a thin vinyl okay. which is they are yeah, everywhere yeah. so accidentally Imitation like wood some, as well in many ways somewhere somewhere someone was kind of you know using that for flooring and i was there i don't know like uh, <laughs> it's it's a kind of a eureka moment for me and i i saw that the 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 surface itself has some marks at the top of it so mm-hmm. when i realized it, when i realized that i just started you know scraping the surface through my nail to to look at is it giving me a desired result or not and that was working for me and that's oh, how I, you know <laughs> yeah so that's how i you know kind of uh, discovered this particular vinyl surface and then later on i experimented over it and that's how you know i started working with the imagery so the so if you ask that from where this imagery comes from so i uh, yes i'll start to ask that next <laughs> so, so yeah so i know that this question will come so i thought i should you answer you preempt it to make sense <laughs> yes please preempt all the questions <laughs> yeah but because so, you do have i mean not only is it a very specific technique and way of method of creating which now we know you you enjoy repetition and you enjoy sort of doing the same thing and perfecting it but again the subject matter is quite particular because well i'd let you talk about it yourself because i i'd like to hear how you first started creating this imagery and why so the 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 first uh, step that was the surface so i got to know and i learned about it like okay this is going to be my surface and this is going to be my medium but what is going to be at the top of it so that was the question and by that time because i was working as an illustrator i was making my own characters and things like that so the first mm. uh thing came to my mind is to create some sort of characters out of it which are kind of personal and mm-hmm. i was uh, by that time i was also teaching at the ivs in the swelly school of art and architecture and we used to give an assignment to our student where we asked them to take any object mm-hmm. and keep it in a natural light source and just cover the whole object in a cloth 
so you cannot recognize what the object is but you are kind of looking at the form out mm-hmm. of it so that idea gave me a second like i gave uh, a second thought to my ideas like how about if let's say if i can take plush toys and then kind of bandage them because the bandage itself has crisscross threads so it gives me an illusion of the three dimensionality if i try to create a certain illusion through light and dark and as i am working in in a reverse technique so that would be something which which is kind of you know which appeals in, in a certain way so that's how i uh, initiated uh through this imagery and then i inve- started investigating about the plush toys those those characters because um if if you remember that like because i my uh in the urban side of pakistan i i i live in karachi so we have this experience when we were kids we used to have all these cartoons uh Mm-hmm. cartoon comes at the national television like tom and jerry and mickey mouse and so forth so so i have that experience in my childhood so uh, so the so the, that is that was the deliberate effort to bring out those plush toys because they have certain characters they look very happy cuddly but connotation changes when they comes under the bandage so they yes, looks exactly. mummified horrific so again you know something which is very beautiful comes as soon as it comes under the bandage the meaning changes and this is something which is there now right now t- uh, till till i begin this work if, if you look at my work from the beginning and what i'm doing right now ab abhi tak jo kuch bhi ho raha hai there is a certain uh, beauty in the cleanliness so th- this con- uh, concept remains somehow whatever i am doing so i took up this idea and then i started building those characters in certain way and started investigating about those fictional characters and like the findings were eye opening for me really for, in what yeah, way in 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 the context of their stories like from mm. how they are coming and the the story which comes in with it that that fascinated me a lot like i usually give this example to to like i've i've given this example in in couple of interviews before like let's say if you look at the the character of the king kong or mm-hmm. the character of the godzilla so if if you if you're kind of looking or watching the the movie which came on that particular character the king kong so you will find out that this is a monstrous character a huge character who lives in a skull island and then mm-hmm. like the people like they just you know capture this creature and they took this character into the metropolitan city which is new york and they were exhibiting this character in a certain way or fit then he escapes and he escapes and he just jumps at the twin tower and then yeah. there were aeroplanes comes in and those go like they kill the the creature they they kill him so yes, this exactly. is a fictional story which narrates mm-hmm. yeah so this is a th- that narrates the whole you know the story the, the, there's a there's a certain story which seems very fictional to you but if you just try to investigate the story in the modern recent times and try to relate it with the reality or the real incidents then you will find something interesting why this character was like uh, was climbing the twin tower by that time so the 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 happening which which is 911 like it somehow i can relate to that and then it was you know attacked by the airplane and that that the but the character you know kind of killed um then the character sel the kong is is as a huge character and it's a black like 
the color is black big ape, so yeah. you can relate yeah so mm. big ape and having the black color so this this makes another connotation in in a in a different context right now we have this black life matter movement is happening all around in 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 the european side but you know so you can relate to that as well so these are little yeah. findings which intrigues me somehow and it it fascinates me like how these stories are kind of built built by that time and then i try to investigate and and make a connection with the reality mm-hmm. similar like the godzilla I'm- is a ma- is yeah. a metaphor of uh, atomic nuclear bomb and oh, it's not a male it's a female she lays egg and then you will find out in 70s or 80s when there there is a movie the the kong versus the godzilla they were fighting mm-hmm. to each other so you know the asian side and the the western side they are fighting mm-hmm. like they are kind of metaphor for me so things like that i really really enjoy and like to investigate in my own so you like way. delving into them no and it's true even a lot yeah. of children's stories for example like that many you know disney movies are based on in reality the stories themselves are much darker and there were many layers of meaning mm-hmm. behind the characters behind mm-hmm. the events that happened and mm-hmm. for children they were made a bit nicer and kinder but the actual stories mm-hmm. if you read their origins were quite dark and creepy but i i do find the the way you use the bandage is quite interesting so i know you wanted to darken and maybe make the fluffy toys less fluffy but what was the reason behind that exactly why did you want to bring in this mummified look was it purely an aesthetic reason which was about making the the visual aspect of your work more interesting or was it more about again harking back to those stories and making the subject matter more sinister and difficult so okay so f- frankly speaking when i initiated the idea of using the bandage so mm. that was uh, purely aesthetical okay so i was look at, looking at the form through that because mm. i have also experienced and i have worked with the animation house so okay. when you cre- create a character uh, yeah so when you create a character you you always look at the x axis and y axis and then you know start making an illusion of the three dimensionality so initially the idea idea evolves from 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 that from 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 the animation house that like how about if if i have a bandage which has x axis and y axis cross and cross and if something which is concealed inside that so obviously this that would give you uh, an illusion of the three dimensionality if you you know put a certain artificial mm. light source then i then i started realizing uh, this the the connotations in terms of conceptualizing the whole idea mm. why I, why am i using this in in a different way so the the bandage itself has again as i'm saying many meanings many connotations you use the bandage when when you are hurt when you when there's a mm-hmm. cut or bleed if you're bleeding then you you normally use that so living in a society looking at the geopolitical situation and all things which are around in in my surrounding is kind of creating the meaning out of it to mm-hmm. to to use that bandage with again with something which is very happy cuddly and it's wrapped and it's concealed it's it's hidden and somehow the the character is not revealed but somehow you can you know get the idea that it it's animating but not not so like animating animate bhi ho raha aur nahi bhi ho raha dono cheezon uske andar so things like that like so i uh, deliberately start thinking about ke why i'm using it and that that's how i came to this conclusion that that this is why probably um the the meaning of bandage comes from me that makes complete sense and tell me a little bit about recent work because i've noticed that recent work of yours particularly work that you've shown um in your most recent exhibition paradise lost has 
mm-hmm. transitioned a great deal. And I was wondering if we could speak a little bit about that show in particular. Now, it's opened over the last month, I believe, if not even later than that, right? Yeah, like a couple of weeks ago, yeah. Wow. So you essentially had to work over this last period of, you know, lockdown and coronavirus scares and everything to prepare this exhibition. Yes, uh, the exhibition was actually uh, scheduled in March 2020. Okay. So then I was uh, like this, the COVID happens, like it's, it started increasing around February. So everything was kind of locked down. So Mm -hmm. we had to postpone the show. So I was working for that, I think nearly, uh, I think I'm working, this is the second year, and the idea initiated actually from from, uh, a residency. So th- this particular exhibition is actually the outcome of a residency which has been offered to me by the An Gandhara Art Space. Okay. So they sent me to to Spain and I was uh, having this residency in the three, C3A Museum at Cordoba and the Lucia. Mm-hmm. So I spent uh, nearly around a month over there and I was researching Wonderful. on certain things. Yeah, so so it, it, the, the Spain has a great history. Like you can see if you go to any museum or if you are looking at the architecture, you will find out the traces of the Roman Empire. And after that, the Islamic Moorish Empire comes in so you can see the traces of the Islamic empire. And then mm. when the Christianity rises, then they took over. And then you can see another layer of the Chris, Chris, Christian, uh, like Christianity, their symbolism. So you will find out three different kind of motifs in a single mm-hmm. architectural building. So that was kind of like, I was very fascinated with the fact and I was looking at the history in a different context. And while I was researching over there, there was a complete lockdown happened in, in Islamabad. There was a Faizabad Dharna. Oh, wow. Okay. Jo tha wo pe, pe hmm. So I was, you know, thinking about all these things and kind of relating that when some someone comes in, to wo purane jo cheeze hoti hai, usko so I was kind of creating a connection in a very different way. So what I did, I, I, I you know, took many images in different museums or apni research ko thoda sa prolong kiya. And then mm-hmm. when I came back over here, I started thinking about it, like how I can you know, start working with all these images. Mm -hmm. Then I planned out the exhibition, uh, which has seven different sections. Wow, that's very large. Yeah, it it is like it has it has seven uh, different sections and they are interconnected to each other. So I've designed a path, path where you can just, you know, you just step in from one side and then you can mm. obviously go to the first section and it guides you towards the second and the third mm-hmm. and the fourth. And that's how you can end it up by looking at the, like all the sections. So the, the seven is a very significant number in, in, in terms of, if you look at the, se- the number seven in, in the religious context, Mm-hmm. Like seven sky, asman seven. Satme, ho, satme seven spirit, heavens, sky yeah. ka hona, seven heavens, yeah. seven sins. Mm-hmm. So this 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 uh, intrigues me to you know, kind of investigate this number, and that's how I deliberately thought. Let's say if I just you know transform the whole gallery in into seven different sections. And then okay. again, the works which are there, they have certain titles. So every section has a title. 
Okay. And there are certain dates which uh, with the the dates are kind of you know pasted over there along with the title, and the work that like you can say that the 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 work has a new direction because I'm exploring something which is new. Like I have made a sound installation in it. Mm. The the imagery itself is kind of different. The technique is the same, but imagery is different. like the way as you're saying like there's a signature style of having a bandage so that is that is probably like you you will not find out over there so so this is the the imagery itself is kind of you know unique in, in a particular way but there is a connection with with uh, with everything which i'm kind of carrying forward so the the like uh, i will i cannot as you cannot uh see the sound installation by yourself so i can just quickly explain that that the, the sound i have recorded my scraping the sound of my scraping ah, when okay. i work so it so it gives me a very jarring or uncomfortable sound so now right now i am very used to with that because yeah, it for looks the very viewer, dramatic quite, to me but yeah. a person which yeah yeah so it is very unpleasant or you oh. what do you call like like most of the people are thinking that this is very horrific and oh, it's yeah. there there is no visual <laughs> there yeah. is no visual with that and it comes from a golden uh, kya kehna chahiye there's a golden jali and this the sound comes oh. from, that. from that so again oh, the, the, the 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 pattern of the the pattern of the jali looks very kind of religious so mm. like there again there are many connotation which comes in uh, against to that sound piece so if, like it starts from there and then there are several sections so you if you, you go to the other section about, you will find out you had said something about the titles sorry. of the seven sections can you tell me what the titles are yeah so so every yeah so the, every tech uh, every section has a certain title so this section which has a sound installation it has a title like chant or lament okay then the other one is inferno like hell taken so like from dante dante yeah uh then yeah so and the third one is uh, the scripture where you will okay. find out an installation of a book then the fourth one has a title standard like there there are three flags over there three standards okay. are there and then the four the four uh, the fifth one is the idol so you will find out the images of uh, sculptures and they were defaced and the sixth one is the glitch and there there's an again there's an installation over there and the final one is the paradise and there is a small work over there in a in a golden frame which depicts the imagery of the northern areas which is pure a landscape and it has i think color in it the very first time i'm using some wow. sort of color or in my imagery so it's that so the Adil, whole show ends up over there wow. so adil this is a mm-hmm. very important show for you because how do you feel after having use so much different imagery different thought processes different connotations different mediums do you feel good about it cuz you've been yeah i of- i think this is uh, again something which I, i'm kind of proud of and um, how do i describe that like i i i have a like i i know that i have find my path i have find new ways by using the same technique mm-hmm. i'm looking you know conceptually i'm looking at it in a very different way but there are things which are layered they are whimsical they are ambiguous in it like they, like for instance if you look at the look at my previous imagery if there is a if there is a bandage character then you can just associate quickly uh with the connotation or with the meanings which comes out of it but here you can find out multiple layers mm-hmm. so the 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 works are kind of ambiguous and it gives you a lot more meaning 
which again you know comes through the audience when they talk about it they will find out something something new in it so and things speaking, like that i'm quite enjoying at this good and speaking of the audience how have they responded Sorry, to it uh, i i said i think there's a delay so just ignore that but i think speaking of the audience how have they responded to this new body of work this new direction have you received interesting comments yes uh, certainly like they are they are the audience is quite intrigued the first thing like there there is a shock value when they comes in mm-hmm. in the gallery because they comes with a preconceived idea that adil is producing you know the similar thing yeah. which which is a kind of a signature style and when they comes in and they they find they found that okay, this is something different so this is the first shock value over there and then when when they you know kind of having a tour of the whole exhibition so they they feel that the 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 ambiance of the whole show is you know pretty beautiful the lighting the color the display and everything but there is something which makes them uncomfortable throughout the show and that's what the i sound. actually the sound itself and the imagery which is there oh. and the the rest of the you know like the the whole body of work is not something which like like they they are in a middle in a gray area like this is this looks beautiful but there is something beyond to that so i think that is the success where i like you know kind of played with their minds so for instance like uh, i can give you an example like when they comes to the section where there are books so like the first glimpse when, when they look at the installation they feel that this is a very sacred book which is there but for me i think it it, it is something different to that but mm. so i'm kind of playing with their mind so they comes with a preconceived idea and they think that this is this but this is not the actually it is not like that and they realizes afterwards when they you know took the whole, whole tour of the exhibition and the most in, interesting parts are the dates which are there along with the with the title because uh, there is no description of those dates anywhere so either okay. either you will find out by yourself so initially you think that probably this is the date when the artist has made this particular work mm-hmm. but then you re- realize that the date says 1980 or 1972 okay. so the the second thought comes in that this is something uh, something different this is not belongs to the to the the year of making of that particular work hmm. so then when they realized they started investigating about it so they google it or you know oh. try to find and when they google the certain date in the context of the pakistani news then hmm. it, it there there certain incident which pops up and then they relate those uh, incidents with the work and that's how it goes that's so interesting so all of the work is actually steeped in a lot of political um and social history and it's actually a comment on that as well very very interesting it is. and of it course is. and that is a that's a continuation of what you were doing with the fluffy toys as well where what you saw was one thing but the way that you configured it and the way that you wrapped it in gauze and bandages turned it into something entirely different very yes. very cool and uh, congratulations I actually uh, thank thank you thank you so much i actually uh, research a lot and i actually tried to make a timeline hmm. of the history of violence within the context of religion in pakistan because i was unable to find anything which was written in that context or uh, you know there was no timeline so i developed my own timeline by researching all these ideas so probably at some stage i will share that with you so so there's yes, a lot please. more research behind oh, this whole exhibition 
but we'll have our own secret chat without anyone else listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I wanted to also ask you a little bit about another show that you have up right now and this curatorial project that you've done. So simultaneously, you told me that you have an exhibition of your own work at Gandhara Art Gallery. And then separately, you've curated a show at Sanat Art Gallery in Karachi. Is that correct? Yes. You've been very productive during COVID, I have to say. So tell me about the second exhibition that you've curated. Um, tell me about it a little bit as well about your ventures into curating, because I know that not only are you an academic, you're teaching at Indus Valley School of Fine Arts, but you also have been a curator now for several years, and you've had very interesting group exhibitions, which have, I mean, I've seen a couple of them, and they've been extremely strong and bold. So I'd like to know a little bit about this one that you've done. Sure. So I probably don't call myself a curator. I'm an artist as a curator because okay. I, have a, I have a very different take on that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there are certain ability, abilities which are there with this new generation and somehow, if you look at their works at the emerging talent shows, uh, you will find out like they're working with different mediums. They, mm -hmm. they have their own ideas. They are conceptually strong. But somehow, after some time, I feel that they are, they are kind of, you know, this is my um, observation that they are still stuck to somewhere and they are not progressing so when when i was looking at all those works so i start started having this conversation with all those younger artists like how about like if you have this particular ability and you're good with that so why why are you just working with this kind of an imagery mm. let's say if you just try out something new something beyond to that then probably this medium will help you out so mm -hmm. you know so I you're have pushing had, them to step out of their comfort zone yeah so i and have expand had their practice many conversations with all these exactly exactly with all these artists and then i i as i as i said that i usually when i work so there is a certain beauty in the ugliness that the concept is there so i try to find out to look at all these works under one roof with where there are different in terms of handling the mediums or ma materials in terms mm -hmm. of their conceptual idea. But you, can, you will find out a certain flavor in, in a, under one roof. So that's how I initiated and um, the, I made a proposal for, the, for Gandhara and I initiated that, let's say, if I just uh, cur curate a show as an artist and title that microcosm and uh, bring out you know many uh, newcomers and see how this comes up so mm -hmm. they, they really like that idea initially and they give me the chance to you know do something in their physical Wonderful. space then I yeah so then I uh, opted uh, Abed Aziz Merchant at Sanat Gallery and you know, I pitched that idea that probably how about because when I was uh, when I graduated, as I said, that was a very hard time for us to, you know, yes. to 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 get a show to, you know, give a proposal to a gallery and things like that. So I think like probably now I'm at a stage where where I can facilitate the, the newcomers in a, in a different way. So I pitch these ideas to different galleries. And again, Sanat is very cooperative. So I, I think, ended up curating the fourth show with them, uh, which is this one, the, the, the recent one. So that's how and like, is it this also is, this called is Microcosm? No, th there, this another series. This is Eclectic Mix, where okay. I can, you know, look at like the, the Prime, primarily, I just looked at different kind of mediums 
and i just try to get those artists they work in in a in a very different medium like in this particular exhibition we have an artist his name is hasnan and he works with graphite he constructs mm-hmm. and carve graphite and he makes you know architectural structure then we cool. have another artist which whose, whose name is faraz mateen so he you know uses the law like pile of paper and then carve out the 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 whole thing and transform it into a very realistic wooden log or something so oh, wow. it gives you an illusion that you're actually mm. looking a log but when you go closer you find you you, you know you, you just got to know oh this is not a log, actual log this is a pile of paper so i i am very intrigued with all these you know media inventors so mm. so i inish yeah so i initiated the this idea and i pitched that to abed and we had a show last year i think last year or before that which is a eclectic mix part 1 and this is 2.0 so so yeah so wow, this is happening cool. in, in, in that way now i wanted to ask you you have participated in exhibitions globally you have curated exhibitions in pakistan or maybe globally as well you've participated in residencies and you've already talked to us a little bit about a recent residency and the magnitude that impact I think the, that has the, had yeah i can uh, yeah there there's there's one uh, exhibition there's one show which i would like to mention uh it 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 happened i think couple of years back at amin gulji's gallery and the title okay. was uh, the radioactive seven like mm-hmm. the 70s the radioactive uh show or something so, like yeah, that I think and they, it was they that yeah yeah and they were kind of investigating the whole decade in like what actually happened in 70s in pakistan so they mm-hmm. invited me as an artist for for this particular exhibition and I, by that time i was uh, much more interested in the history revisionism okay. so i i you know took a very different path to exhibit my work which is not my which was not my signature style mm-hmm. i i i have a very uh, old vintage morris minor 1962 it's a car it's okay. a british car <laughs> sorry that british took car. me a second <laughs> thank you for clarifying <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a british british car uh, which uh, we used to have in 70s and 80s over here in in pakistan it was imported and somehow like it has an age of you know more than 50 years now so i wow. got this car from islamabad i think 5 6 years back and when i got this car because i have this um, kya kehna chahiye this passion to collect old things so i i was very fascinated ke now i have this old vintage car with me very okay, cool and uh, somehow <laughs> yeah so somehow when i got that car uh i had no idea about the engine and you know all this mechanics hmm. so when when i when when i was kind of running that car something happened and i took it to the workshop and then i found out that there are certain parts in in the car and they are not original like they they are you know fabricated and they were you know kind of made over here in pakistan because obviously it's a old car so getting mm. the 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 parts is a it's a is a difficult task task so so the, so the mechanics who were working on that car before they actually you know fabricated aur wo jugad karke unhone jo hai na usko uska kaam jo tha wo chala diya yani the car was mm. running Yeah so so then I started investigating about the old manuals of the cars mm. and I started you know investigating from where I can get the like the original auto parts of the car so what I did in this exhibition at the Amin Gulji's gallery I just installed like I parked my car over there and installed the whole 
auto parts at the wow. uh, along along with the car. So it, I was kind of investigating the history. Like I'm going to mm. like it's a sort of an investigating in investigation through the history revisionism, where I, my idea was to look at the history where you can find traces of the originality which is there, ah, very and that is not there actually. So that's such a great yeah, idea. So, and you mentioned something about collecting i'm going to open it up to questions if anyone has any questions please do type them in but abil tell me what else do you collect besides old cars so i have a collection of uh, uh, emerging talents like i have many works with them i have no space mm-hmm. to you know to put their works but they are there and uh, i right now today i have got a print of zarina hashmi which comes oh, from wow. tate yeah How so special. that yeah so that comes in my collection as well so things Very like nice. that i try to collect in my own way and any other things of like sort of maybe non art related things like vintage cars uh, some interesting you- stuff toys stuff toys yes yes i have stuff toys and whenever i go to my you know relatives so they started you know hiding Lifting. all those yeah oh. hiding those toys <laughs> they, they they think that okay this person is here and he will probably you know get something apne kaam ke liye yahan se kuch utha ke jo na wo le jayega oh no and, <laughs> and and i have a huge collection of movies i am a bo- movie buff so up to khair dvd is kind of obsolete now the netflix mm. and everything is there but i have a huge collection of dvds and movies very cool <laughs> but that's true about you know even even letters people used to save letters that they were sent before and collect those and now you know you can't really save emails that becomes a bit sad and as yeah. you print them all out so we're losing that sort True. of physical attribute like we've lost vi- video tapes now as well dvds are obsolete it's no fun to just collect files on a computer or how many of those can you sit with i i have as you remind me i have i think three walkmans still running wow that's cool <laughs> uh, i i have uh, you know the, the Ca- casio they actually yeah. introduced a watch which has a game i think in 80s so i have i have it with me abhi tak wo hai to is tarah ki bahut sari cheeze hain i still have it with me <laughs> well but that's so nice that you keep those things as well do you ever maybe one day you can expand your artwork to include your walkman and your dvd collection and your films as well why not uh, who knows who knows yeah <laughs> yeah who knows <laughs> But Adil this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for taking out the time to speak with us. No one seems to have asked any questions and I'm just always very nervous about the time running out. So I will wrap up. But thank you for this. It's been an absolute pleasure to hear more about your practice, hear about the changes it's going through which is so exciting and the curatorial work that you do. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me for this forum. and i'm glad that we had a chat mera khayal hai kitne bahut arse ke baad i think we have we are having this conversation yeah, so for very for long the time. for the secret chats i will call you. we'll have a phone call <laughs> oh yes that sounds good thank you everybody for joining us and see you next week bye adil talk soon <laughs>